Hello and welcome to another GeoControl tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use selectors to select different heights and apply different filters to those selections. Um, and I'm going to start by just going briefly going over different options um, and explaining their purposes. I did make another GeoControl tutorial earlier and uh, you can go back and watch that if you need a more in-depth um, uh, view on how to use ISO lines or ESO lines, however you want to call them. First what I want to do is just kind of go over the basic uh, setup that I have for my scene that I want. So here on the width, this is the width of the train and the height of the train. So this is going to be the highest value for like, you know, your mountain peaks and whatnot. This is just going to be the width, so your your square width of your terrain. I want to set this to kilometers because I find that kilometers is best to use when dealing in view or even game engines. Not only that, but I like how using how I can only use like, or I can use just you know two values or two numbers to get a realistic value and call it good. Uh, to change these, you just highlight, you just click in the box, highlight, and then hit the delete key because the back button on your keyboard won't work. You have to use the delete key. And if you use the, then that should do it. The height. Um, I should explain one thing. So. With the width, the, the wider your terrain, um, the smaller the, the peak of your mountains is going to look at its max height. The max height really isn't changing. It's still the same value, but it's just wider. So when uh, GeoControl renders it out, um, they look smaller, but they're not. It's just wider, um, so there's more um, space to fill in. So if I were to take a value of like, you know, something high like 11,088 and make this like 150 kilometers 11,088 is going to be like well that's not very high but then when you drop it in the view or into a game engine you're going to be like holy crap that mountain's really large so or really tall so you don't want to have drastic very large changes changes um, to your values just keeping within a, a reasonable range like something that you'd find on earth or you know you you have your imagination go go ahead and use your imagination but if you want to make something a little more realistic use realistic values so I'm just gonna go with somewhere around maybe the 4,000 range so that's good I'm not gonna touch any of this I will keep the seed though uh, if you don't keep your seed every time you generate um, even with ISO lines if you generate your terrain it'll make a different seed here and the fractal noise it uses will change the actual ISO line won't change, but the noise that's used to generate it will. So you'll get a different look every time. So that might be nice to help get different, you know, different <coughs> um, look in your terrain every time. So I keep it checked because I want to keep it just the same. Uh, let's go to ISO lines, and I do want to start on an empty um, canvas. So I'll click yes, and I'll just briefly go over these options as I work on my. Uh, landscape, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. So first what I want to do is start on I, our ISO 0. I'm just going to rename this to maybe ground level. And rule of thumb, always work in levels. Don't ever just have one level and make your entire terrain on that one level because if you do, chances are if you make a mistake you're going to have to redo everything. So best thing to do is work on levels. Very important. Next, I just want to have my pen tool checked. I want to lower my terrain height. And these, this is in meters and this will range from zero all the way up to the max height that you checked on your terrain in the general tab under height. Um, and This will measure it in meters. So if I want, if 3914 meters is the tallest um, highest value um, of my terrain and zero is the lowest and if you look at these colors right here these kind of just represent in my opinion this helps me anyways this dark blue is kind of like the ocean as you go up it gets lighter then it'll be like well this is probably gonna be like the lower portions of the ocean and then light blue rivers um, and then right here will probably be like the beach and right here will be where your grass and your mountain landscapes start Forming. So, if I want a ground plane, it's probably going to be somewhere within this 1,000 range. Um, I could probably even go lower, like right here is probably sand, 
and then right here will be where grass starts so maybe 800 now this is a very small elevation because this is what this slider does is it changes the elevation of your terrain um, so when you first make your changes on your canvas it'll probably be a little bit difficult to see and you're like well that doesn't really do anything but this is 800 meters so it's going to look small but when you put it into another engine or program it's probably going to be rather large so just remember that make sure you have your pen tool checked and right here are your levels and your strengths <clears throat> so you can't go any higher so where you see where this uh, 1024 level is you can tell by the name right here 1024 and this is the strength of that level whatever your general dimensions right here in your general tab and then under dimensions whatever this is is the max it can go to so you can't go higher 20 these options are still here but you can tell the difference in color these are darker green and these are green these are usable these are not so just keep those low just disable them completely you can disable any of these by just clicking in the gray area underneath it um, and just don't even worry about these uh, and matter of fact in most cases you don't even want to worry about this layer either or even this layer but I'll get into that a little bit here anyways so pen tool and I'm gonna go to layer 4 and I'm gonna go about midway 150 you can tell this is layer 4 because it tells you strength is 150 <clears throat> then I'm just going to take my pen tool checked on that layer and I'm just going to drag just kind of make a swirly line like this and generate and this will create a bunch of random elevation and noise patterns and this will just be our um, our landscape for now and this is the tallest portion that we have in our landscape and this is the lowest so the highest elevation and the lowest elevation you can see how it kind of grades up into that and that's good that's good for our ground level I'll add another layer and I'll call this layer maybe Midlands and click OK and uh, you see how we have this right here make sure you're also another rule of thumb before I continue write down your values um, if you don't write down your values chances are you're going to forget them and you need those for the selector when I get to the selector portion of this tutorial so write down your values and I just pulled up a notepad and wrote down ground level max elevation equals 800 and right here I'll say midlands max elevation <coughs> equals hang on, I'm just gonna stick with the same equals and I'm just gonna make this maybe uh, maybe 1280 like that <coughs> We just raise it up to 1,280. That simple. There we go. That's good. And I don't want that. I do want a little bit. So what this will do is the higher this value on level 4, the more detail you'll have at the lower elevations of your ISO line, your ESO line. Um, so if you want your easel line to be very prominent and completely show itself up off You'll just take these higher values like 1024 and raise this all the way up <clears throat> In strength and if we generate that let's See it's pretty much just a straight line As a Matter of fact, it's so much you can't even see it So if we lower the value and just lower this one or raise this one and generate now you can see so don't use large values at these higher levels unless you absolutely need them. Rule of thumb, another rule of thumb. All right, so back to here, I'll raise this to 150. I wish you can click in the box up there and change it manually, but you can't. So 150 was pretty good. For some reason it didn't generate my terrain. probably because I changed it on and keep the settings there generate there we go that was just weird all right so next one again these are gonna be midlands so I don't want to completely get rid of this level 4 layer but I don't want as much 
power on it because I want there to be a little bit more rocky hillness look to it which we can get with filters but we need to have the actual landscape there to make a difference so I'll lower this and I'll lower this and this will just kind of be like an inverse thing going on see how it goes up and then down rather than going straight down I'll just get rid of this and I'll keep this 128 level uh, height is set to 128 and I'm just gonna randomly just post things and I'm not gonna make the lines too long and you can just kinda see what that does and then I'm also going to go back after I generate I'm just gonna make little legs and arms come off of this like this what I'll do is it'll stretch out the terrain more from these areas but retain the same kind of information in height altitude um, or altitude so you can see how it's creating these little valleys and ravines in between you go to 2d or 3d and you can see it going on right here and I'll do that on both sides because I'm just gonna kinda create a little valley here and you can do it all in one air, one motion you don't have to generate first and then <coughs> go on and just do it all at once generate there we go so now we have our hills and our valley over here we probably use a little bit more so maybe right there and right there and right here there we go that looks good with 3d view we got our valley with non-uniform land underneath it because you can see the little option the little like hills and divots in the land there and right here and then you have our hills <clears throat> and then next add and this is will be our mountains and you know what I'm gonna rename this because I already know what the filter I want and you can name these layers or whatever you want but I like to name them of what their purpose is and then the filter that um, affects them and I didn't do it on the midlands or the ground level, but that's generally what I would do in any other circumstance. Uh, but this is going to be mountains and it's going to be full ridge. And I'm going to raise the altitude really high on this one, so maybe around 3511. And I don't really like to go all the way to the top with the elevation because it will actually start getting flat. Um, and it'll look very wrong. It's very noisy and and noise uh, noisy and gainy. I guess I could say it's really spiky. So I don't like going all the way to the top, but almost there. And then I like to enable height two. <clears throat> and what that'll do is it'll make it so it's not uniformed in height. It'll have different elevations throughout the entire landscape. And you want to write these down as well. So this is going to be mountains max elevation equals three five two eight and then you just go down tab over uh, minimum equals or min elevation equals one eight eight zero and this is very important to know and remember for the selectors like I said before make sure you remember those write them down it's important now I have this set I want to change I guess I should have changed that first but it doesn't matter it's okay because having a great gap in between can actually look really good so we're just gonna make sure we have this selected and I'm going to take this completely off I'm gonna lower this to really low levels I'm gonna raise this or late not raise but lower that and I'm gonna raise this and I'm gonna raise this I'm gonna raise this maybe a little higher right there and I'm going to take that off and I don't have any reason why I chose these other than I after playing with geo control I know these values work for mountains and typically I'll make them and then I'll go back and I'll tweak these trying to find what I need uh, but so you can copy these options it's 8 at 50 16 at 100 32 at 198, 64 at 148, and 128 at 122. So that's what you can use. Then I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to start kind of behind the hills, uh, but not too far because the way ISO lines it'll, it'll make it, it really depends on these other la layers you have. So not too far behind or else you'll get a gap 
right here between the mountains and the hills. So I'm going to go about right here, and I'm just going to stretch the ISO line out to the corners or to the edge of the map. But see how I'm behind the hills. Um, with the Elevation 2 enabled, it'll actually start from the highest point and go down to the lowest point of the elevation. So you want to just kind of know what you're doing there and just kind of play around with it like that. And another rule of thumb is to not use really long lines. I'm probably already using really long lines. So I'll just redo this. This is your selector tool. If you click on that, click on and then select your ISO line. Here's your eraser tool and you can see that it erases it. Now make sure you erase the entire thing because you can erase portions of your ISO line and then when you go back and you generate it, it'll still generate that small portion of your ISO line. What I mean by that is you can delete this, say you want that part, and you go back and you can delete this. Um, but I want to delete all of it, so I'm just going to erase all of it. And generate. There we go. Now nothing happened. So, I do want it to extend out that way, but I want smaller legs coming out like that. Um, and they go over the hills, that's okay. And I'll just continue going about like this. And again, right here, and I'm just randomly doing it. There's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, other than it's just random. And we'll see how that looks. Okay. So yeah, the mountain ranges right here. So this might be a mountain, then a, a, va a valley pass or a canyon pass. And then right here, another, and so on and so forth. And that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to continue. I'll make another line right there. And maybe make one more coming out right there. And that looks good. And I'll keep this, because I like this. This will be like a little canyon um, that you might be able to drive through. You can make a road going through there, uh, going into a different area, and it'll be like a river maybe. So I'll just keep that. And with these same values that I have right here and right here, I'll just do the same thing on the other side. So just right behind the hills and then stretch the main portion of the mountain range back towards the edge of the map and just random little lines and squiggles. And you can get sophisticated and scientific with it, but I honestly, I don't. So simple as that. And just remember that you do have that second height enabled, so depending on where you start, you have to take that into consideration because you might put a really tall mountain peak somewhere where you might not want it. There we go, and then again, there's another little valley right there. 3D. And there's our mountains. Valley, hills, midlands, mountains. So that looks good. Uh, and you might even be able to just stretch these out even a little bit further over the mountains like this, just nice little random squiggles out. There we go. And that looks good. All right, next. Selector. This is very important. This is why we save these. So here's the guts of the terrain, or the tutorial. So we, I want to work from levels that I've created from first to last. So I created the ground level first at elevation 800. So in the selector tab, under height, and you can use any of these if you know what you're doing, and, and, and it's just exactly what it says. Orientation, slope, relative, which is a little bit different. That might be a little bit harder to understand, and we'll get into that at a later time. And then roughness, so you can select different roughness of the, the terrain and whatnot. Uh, but I just want to select the height because I want to affect certain elevations with different filters. So I'm going to enable it, and then the minimum height I want to affect is going to be zero but the max I want to affect is going to be 800 because that's the ground level. Next are these fuzzy options, and these are the same fuzzy options that you get in VUE and other 3D programs, and all they do is add kind of like a feather value to it, so instead of being a harsh cutoff, it's smooth. So that's pretty much it. You don't really have to worry about it on the minimum value because we're at zero, but maybe on the max, I'll raise it to maybe two or three, uh, and then when you're done with these settings. Uh, you don't have to worry about add, subtract, or average here. Um, actually, you might want to hit add. We'll see what that does. And then you hit create. And what that'll do is it'll bring you to the 2D view, and this red area is your selection. And right here you can actually make different changes on the fly. 
and 14 might be a little too much, but we'll go to 5. Um, create, actually, my bad. Create, not generate, but create. Then you can see the changes on the fly. There you go. I don't want it to go that high, though. So I just wanted to go just maybe a little bit higher than the actual default. I just did that again. Um, and that should be fine. Now the name of your selection is important as well because if you have too many selections, and it will automatically number them selection 0, which is your first one, selection 1, which is your second selection, but you can actually just rename these yourself. So I'll call this ground level. Hit OK. Let me go into the filter tab. And I'm just going to use some preset filters because I don't want to explain the settings here too much on all of these because all of them have so many different values. So I'll get into that at a later time. So I'm just going to do filter presets. And I want to go to shape filters. Actually, you know what? I want to do one of them in here is valley smoothing, but I guess not. I'm going to do cross hills. I'm just going to choose something that's kind of interesting, but isn't chaotic, at least for this layer. Uh, maybe Cross Hills isn't the right one. Rocky Hills might work. Let's do this one. High contrast one, sharp rocks, and very smooth fillings. Double click on that. It'll uh, tell you that it's based on a um, lower power, a uh, noise power. Do you want to auto adjust? And you just hit yes. And it'll auto adjust the noise power right here. And close that. And then you can, before you generate it though, you go to settings, click on selection. You don't want it everywhere, you want it on the ground level. And that's the selection we made in the selector tab. And then you just hit generate. And what I'll do is it'll just affect that selection. So that looks good. And there's our effect. Now that might be a little bit too much. So you can change any filter you put on on the fly and it'll keep the settings. So if I go to shape filters and I choose cross hills like I wanted before, it'll keep all of these settings. <coughs> or it did in the last video anyways, but maybe that was just a blog, bug and a fluke. I'll choose rough canyons. I just want to kind of I kind of just want to see what that looks like mostly. And hit generate. And again, make sure you choose your selection because you don't want it to affect everything. And you can kind of see where now it's creating kind of like a canyon effect right here. So these are the hills of the canyon and all of these are not touched. So that's definitely not right. So you can just play with these all you really want. It doesn't really matter what you do. Just make sure it makes sense to yourself, I guess. Uh, what I usually do with the ground level is I just use a erosion system um, and I just choose soft fluvial. Make sure you go back in here and make sure it's selected and even these erosion patterns have presets. So it'll take you to soft fluvial old and right here it'll show you the presets. Maybe that's not even the best one to use either. See, it's just kind of, there's just so many different options to go over, so you just have to kind of, you just have to kind of look and see. These are the inverse, that's why I didn't look right. This looks more appropriate. I'm willing to choose this one. Single rivers. Last levels. Maybe, maybe not that one. Maybe this one. And generate. There we go. I'm afraid that may have took too much of our detail out though, so. Anyways, let's continue. Selector, and let's add another selection. We don't want that. We just want ground level. We can probably remove that. Oh, okay. It's in there because we have it selected. That's alright. Um, we have to go to filter. Click on that, make sure we're in settings, and make sure it's just set the ground level still. So that's fine. And then right here, this will be Midlands. 
all the erosion um, effects have selectors because you can actually use all these options to make masks out of your erosion system so you can mask out the erosion and you can fill it in with the texture so you can have like what you would do in view if you would export it from world machine so that's what that is midlands and if we go back to the notes the midlands max elevation was 1280 so max elevation right here we'll set to 1280 and the max elevation of the ground was 800 so we'll set the minimum to 800 and we'll make a fuzzy value right here of maybe one or two and we'll make a fuzzy value right here of one or two and that looks good make sure you create and now it's created you can see where it's selected so that looks good and you actually might be able to take the fuzzy of the max up even higher or create I did it again and that looks go a little bit lower five <laughs> there we go all right we go filter and we'll add cross hills cross hills is one of my favorite selection midlands filter presets cross hills and let's choose something like this standard rocky with typical cross form auto adjust yes generate there we go 3d bam smooth lower valley rocky hills and then we go to selector add rename mountains now this one had two values we want to set the height minimum make sure you enable it to whatever the minimum was here so the minimum was 1880 so we'll just 1880 and the max we'll just turn it all the way up uh, it doesn't really matter because at a certain point there aren't even even anything isn't there isn't even anything there to, to generate so we'll just turn it all the way up so you don't by the way these uh, this max slider affects the lower minimum value so as you go down with the max the minimum actually goes down as well so careful with that change these once more and I'm just going to have a fuzziness of two on this as well create and you can see the selection there and if you play with the fuzziness here you can see it actually goes down the terrain more and then let's go to six create and actually no, let's go a little bit higher create there we go now let's go to filter again and add shape filters mountains full ridged settings choose mountains and let's just look at some presets which ones look like ones we need it's like something we need strong mountains yes and generate there we go 3d bam all right looks good um, then we can actually just for good measure we can take one more erosion pass add an erosion system we'll do soft fluvial old again and we'll just do the filter preset and not wide we need oh did I choose an inverse there I guess I did move that add hmm. soft fluvial then filter presets soft fluvial and let's look at strong three and we'll add that and then we'll go into settings and we'll change this to mountains as well and generate that way it only affects the mountains because we have erosion already affecting the lower areas a different erosion system and then another erosion system affecting the higher values um, where the mountains are and the cross hills actually have a fluvial type that you can change that kind of mimics erosion pattern which is really fast and awesome so we're not going to really worry about that um, that looked like it didn't do much of anything probably because these settings are not right 
or whatever. Um, so we can just go to filter presets and maybe choose something a little bit stronger. Might have to change this to something else like high sedimentation. That's usually a pretty strong erosion system. <clears throat> Let's choose this one. Generate. Now that affected the uh, mountain ranges quite a bit. But now they actually look like mountains rather than globs of noise that kind of look like mountains. So that's good. Um, after that, we already have everything we need here to kind of create our, our landscape. We have mountains on this side, mountains on this side, valley in the middle, we have hills, we have noise flowing throughout the lower areas. Um, I think the next thing that we would have to just do is make sure that we're at the uh, actual dimensions that we want and then render out or generate the uh, formations that we want at a higher dimension, higher uh, resolution. So the next thing to do is to just go to generation, terrain export, and export it as your favorite thing, but I kind of want to show you guys something cool. So I'm going to export it as a raw 16. I'm going to call this test, put it on the desktop. <clears throat> and this tutorial is going on to be about 31 minutes, so I just want to speed it up from here. So uh, let me load up CryEngine, and I have it up right here. And I'm just going to go to Train, um, Edit Terrain, File, Import Height Map. And there's the test. Open that up, and here's the terrain that we made inside GeoControl. Now it might look wrong right now because we have, you know, we have these, let me speed up. Camera. And we have the, uh, the valley, and then we have our hills right there, our midlands, and then we have our mountains, which seem really tall and really spiky. That's because of the way it imported into the engine. So if we go to modify and uh, reduce range heavy, we just do this a couple times. And maybe one more time. There we go. And let's just fly over to here and see what we've got. And close this. And I'll jump into the game. Uh oh, probably should have got closer to the train. Now my guy's dead. <clears throat> and we can see all the way across. And uh, CryEngine does a really good job at automating the actual width of the train. So this is about, uh, what do we make, 50 kilometers? So this is about 50 kilometers from where I'm at or where it would be from over there all the way across the map and it does a really good job at getting the height down as well so here are our midland hills and we're getting into uh, in this new version of CryEngine that you can't run forever they actually have a stamina bar so that's kind of annoying um, and you just keep running and running and running and it just keeps going on forever because our values are so large. So if I wanted to, I could run over here. We can play around over there. We can tr create this landscape we just made into a video game landscape if we wanted. So let's just speed it up and show you. This is kind of at the pace we'd be moving, though it's a little bit faster. That one. And we have here. It's a little bit spiky down here. Um, and this is how it would look in any other program as well, uh, but if you were to put it in view, you wouldn't get that close with the camera anyways, so you wouldn't be able to notice that, as well as get close enough to the landscape to notice this, these weird uh, spiky patterns, which if you, if I would have spent a little bit more time in GeoControl, we could have gotten these down perfect, but I didn't, but right here is a perfect example, so the highest altitude point right here that's the max height and then you can see where it kinda goes down gradually because of that uh, secondary elevation that we had set so that's why that's important to have with your mountains because you don't want them to all just be flat mountain ranges they actually have character and they go down and they look how they're supposed to look now we can fly all the way from one end to the other uh, and so on and so forth. This is just massive. There's no way that I would use this in a game. It would be cool, but it just would not be feasible. Um, and yeah, that's it. You can import this into any other program you want. So this is CryEngine. It uh, uses RAW 16. You can import that RAW 16 file into view and use that as well. 
I just kind of want to show you guys another cool thing. You can just go to modify and smooth, and this will smooth the entire terrain, and that will actually get rid of some of those really sharp points that we're seeing. So now you can kind of see how they're smoothed out. So that's a, it's a nice thing about game engines too. They just handle this kind of stuff very well. I mean, view's nice. Gives you a lot more realistic results than anything you're going to get in the game engine, but it's pretty. It's it it it's just cool. Trust me. So there's that. Let's go in there and spruce it up a bit. Anyways, other than all the jibber jabbering I'm doing, I just kind of want to show you at ground level that this is indeed not a flat terrain because you can kind of see little bumps here and there that are happening throughout the terrain, maybe more down towards the lower elevations, you start getting a little more flat, but um, just wanted to show you what the fruits of your labor will give you, and they are awesome. So, anyways, if you have any questions, concerns, remarks, or even requests, please let me know, and I will try to get to them as soon as possible. This kind of turned into a selection tutorial to a look what you can do in a game engine tutorial towards the end, but that's okay because that's just more learning for you, and that's awesome. So. Uh, let me know what you want. That concludes this tutorial, and I will see you guys next time.